the SNP had a good thing going, really. They could do no wrong when they first got into power, considering everybody in Scotland would never vote for the Tories again, and Labour were falling by the wayside. So they really could have done good things for this country. They had it all in the palm of their hands. And then Nicola Sturgeon gets in charge and removes the disguise that unveils her as some rapid far left intersectional arsehole who seems to be more obsessed with quota systems and representation than she does for doing anything productive for this country. All she does is whine and moan and brag about how progressive we are and passes this fucking shit in the background continuously and then occasionally comes out, teases independence just to keep enough followers in check. How many promises is she going to break before people start to wake up? How much more of this idiotic crap is she going to get away with before people start to wake up? So, before I get on to her response to her feminist council of all things, and their heartfelt pleas in her manifesto, she's responded to that. It's not good. But first of all, here's the latest organisation or charity, whatever, that the Scottish Government are funding yet another feminist organisation in Scotland. How many have we got now? How much taxpayers' money is getting pissed away on all these organisations and charities for women and girls? It's getting ridiculous now. I get this, it's called Fearless Femi. And talk about backward as fuck when you read this, right? Because it goes on to say, it hopes to save the lives of young women across the world. And how did the person who created this come to this revelation? Well, of course, Fearless Femi was developed by a social entrepreneur and an academic Dr. Eve Hepburn, now the startup chief executive who envisaged the organization following the loss of her stepbrother to suicide two years ago. Dr. Hepburn also previously suffered a breakdown in mental uh, uh, sorry, ill health following a series of personal traumas, including the death of her boyfriend. So there's two boys that have died here, yet she goes on to talk about the heartfelt pleas of fucking people that ain't white men. I mean, you, you couldn't make this up. How out of touch are these people from reality is beyond me. Speaking ahead of tonight's launch, Hepburn explained, after experiencing a breakdown of losing my stepbrother to suicide. So, there, you know, there's two boys that have died, which kind of led her on the track towards creating this organisation. But she goes on to say, I made the decision that I needed, not just wanted, but needed to establish fearless femme. I needed to stop people from killing themselves. What, because two boys have killed yourselves, so you decide to make an organisation predominantly for girls and quote-unquote non-binaries. That makes sense. I needed people like my 19-year-old self, reeling from grief from the death of her boyfriend, to know that they weren't alone, that they were that they were enough, they weren't gonna, they were going to get through it. During her previous career as a senior lecturer at University of Edinburgh, she was concerned by, by a notable increase in the number of female students she saw struggling with mental health issues. But yet, two boys have committed suicide. Boys with the highest suicide rate in Scotland. You're not going to talk about that though, on oh, no, all because it's all about the heartfelt pleas of the oppressed minorities. Such as this, research indicated that mental health among students was increasing. Oh, here we go, it's always increasing. Marginalisation, discrimination, racism, sexism, sexual harassment all on the rise. Just right in the nick of time for the lefty politicians to get away with passing shit like this. This is what justifies it. They're making up fake studies and statistics. Some categories, oh. Students was increasing in some categories, women, LGBT, black and ethnic minorities and international students. Okay, so every demographic bar white men. <laughs> I'm out of my shock. The research also pointed the benefits of online support, which informed eventually online presence of fearless femme. Fearless femme aims are framed by the fact that young women are the highest risk group for mental health illnesses in the UK. <laughs> what about men and women? What about kids in general, teenagers and adolescents, students in general? Why do we need another organisation? Why do we need any organisations that solely focus on the pleas and the plights and the problems that's, that girls face or in many cases don't face? And what I mean by that is, let's not beat around the bush here, there's a, a, a monumental amount of exaggeration going on here. You're not oppressed, minorities treated exactly the same as everybody else in society and just because you've got a bunch of fucking Marxist feminists spouting off a rake of crap that Sturgeon laps up and drools over, it doesn't make it real. Research also demonstrates that psychological distress amongst young women is linked to the growing pressure that the demographic faces, including 
<laughs> increasingly unrealistic body image and societal expectations regarding personal beauty, academic stresses of school or university, the negative effects of social media, and an increase in sexual harassment. Oh, fuck off, man. So anyway, <clears throat> this is all in the wake of the Sturgeon's response to the Feminist Council. I mean, it just... It's never ending. It's getting ridiculous now. <laughs> it's an indication of how far we've come. Last year, women accounted for 60% of entrants to undergraduate courses in Scotland. For medical degrees, the figure was slightly higher at 61. That's not equal, Sturgeon. It should be 50-50, should it not? Or is it when it's more girls or more females in specific fields or entry levels or whatever it may be? If it's female dominated, that's fine. If it's male dominated, that's a problem. I'm starting to notice the pattern here, Sturgeon. The more you preach to the choir that you are some progressive guru, the more I realise you're nothing but a fucking misandrist. That's what you are. Misandrist by your standards anyway, be considering everybody's a rampant misogynist in this fucking country, can, apparently. Well, by your own logic and by your own namby-pamby definitions, I think it's safe to assume that you're a misandrist. Not once do you ever mention boys. Never, never, ever do I ever hear them being mentioned, even though they're failing in the UK academically, on average, white boys. But of course, you don't give a shit about white boys because they're not, they're not black, are they? Or they're not gay. Or they're not women. <laughs> so I think we can take encouragement from the progress that's been made since then. That said, it's very clear on a daily basis that Scotland, like so many other countries, still has a long way to go in achieving true gender equality. You say this as if you're, we're on a path that will lead to an inevitable, in the sense that this has been done and tried before and it works, when in actuality, <laughs> it doesn't work, as has been seen in the Nordic countries. The opposite happened in regards to what they thought would happen. I'm not going to digress into that. Everybody probably knows about that. You can look at it yourself. Nonetheless, so the other aspect of what she's referring to in that regard is, of course, the representation. Oh, there's not 50% of women in certain aspects of society. That's oh, that's inequality. Rampant inequality. Oh, no. <laughs> Get your priorities straight, you fools. One of the things I pledged when I became first minister, the first oh, the first woman to have the privilege of holding this office. Now, if this was really as bad as you make it out to be in terms of a country, you would never have got that job. Was that I'd do everything I could to improve opportunities for women and girls. <laughs> I can't say, man. It makes no sense. It's just absolute tripe. Nothing holds back girls in this country the same as nothing hold back, holds back boys. Now, if I know that, and everybody I know knows that, how come you don't know that? How come far-lefty politicians and far-lefty professors, sociologists and social constructionists, they can't see it, but everybody else can? You're, you're living in a bubble, Sturgeon. And I really hope people wake up, because the longer she's in power, the worse this is going to fucking get. <laughs> anyway. That's a commitment that I take seriously that's extremely close to my heart. And, and it's what the government that I lead has tried to do. We've taken a range of measures to challenge gender stereotypes, help women's voices to be heard, and tackle violence against women and girls. Violence against women and girls. But it happens the other way around as well. Again, you can't talk about something as if that's somehow an indicator of gender inequality when it happens the other way around too. Even if the numbers ain't exactly the same, it doesn't matter. It happens the other way around. Anyway... However, we we uh, we know we need to do much more to eradicate persistent inequalities that many women and girls still face in their daily lives. Oh my God, this is fucking ridiculous. Eh? This isn't Gambia, it's fucking Scotland. And you can't in one breath sing the praises of our country to the world and brag about how progressive and then you get with all of our equality here. And then the next breath shit on us every chance you get in order to push more and more and more garbage. She was inspired by Molly Face Obama, oh God. <laughs> took the decision to establish the Advisory Council of Women and Girls. Oh, yes. A council full of feminists and social constructionists. All, all, all women. As if women think completely differently to men. So you, you need women in there to represent women because men can't be there because men think differently to women. This is very bizarre. That's why I'm delighted to receive your first report and recommendations. Oh, no, no, no. This is what I'm dreading. 
as I said earlier on, I'm so grateful for everyone who's contributed to the process. Members of the council, members of the circle, those who participated or through the monthly Spotlights event. The result of all that work, in my views, is a report of great insight and huge ambition, and I warmly welcome a report of fuck off, Sturgeon. The 11 recommendations are thought-provoking. They're also challenging, and that is exactly what I hoped they would be. I mean, what is this? Now, <laughs> now I don't have time to obviously talk in detail about each of the recommendations in the end. In any event, the Scottish Government will take the time to consider all of them properly and carefully, and we will publish a full and considered response in due course. But I do want to give you some of my immediate thoughts on key recommendations. One of the things I found very encouraging is that some, not all, of the recommendations broadly align with the work that we, as the leaders of Rainbow Unicorn Land, are already doing. For example, the report focuses rightly on the central importance of education. We've already taken significant action to ensure that our education system promotes gender inequality all disguised under some fucking LGBT education yeah that's right I told you it weak the feminism and we will look at your recommendations blah 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 similarly you proposed improvements to the services we provide to victims of sexual violence I agree absolutely that it's hugely important uh, your, your proposal to incorporate in the Scots law the UN convention, convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against, <laughs> against women what about men what about fucking men? This is ridiculous. This is one that I particularly welcome, of course you do. And a recommendation that is particularly timely. You will be aware that in December, another advisory council, the one on human rights, recommend that we embed human rights in the new statutory framework. I strongly support the overall vision and direction of travel and have already announced that we will establish a task force to take that for what the f I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, by the way. Anyway, uh, the report also recommends a further expansion of early years learning and childcare. As you know, the Scottish Government is currently in the process of almost doubling the funded childcare entitlement. Oh, that's really good if you Sturgeon, but why do you keep breaking your promises? Eh? You're postponing dealing with benefits now to what, 2021, 2022? Is that another way just so you can wrangle yourself back into power? What about a council tax, Sturgeon? Or what about a fuck now that we're paying monumental higher prices on tax? All these things that you said that you would deal with. All these broken promises when you sit there and shave your hair as short as possible to replicate that of a man. <laughs> and that current expansion obviously has significant log logistical and financial implications associated with it. So I'm going to be straight with you on this one. An immediate priority. <laughs> However, as we look to the next parliament, we will carefully consider future investments. Ah, no, 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 no. Get her out. Whether that's an after school care or a further expansion, why can't you do that now? Why do you need to wait? And I can confirm to you today that your recommendation will form a central part of that discussion. A central part of that discussion. This feminist dribble. The whole manifesto was nothing other than statistics and conclusions and hearsay and just bullshit written by a bunch of social constructionists. If you go up to a bunch of social constructionists and ask them to help achieve equality, you're not going to get little measures and quota systems as suggestions. You're going to get a how-to guide to rewrite society. Now, there have been some recent positive signs that the media is starting to take issue this issue seriously. Oh yeah, harmful stereotypes. <laughs> The way portray the media portrays women, oh, and, and men, by the way, is clearly a big factor in shaping harmful gender stereotypes. Or harmful gender stereotypes, what? Because we can't have an advert on the TV where a woman has a Hoover, or is in the kitchen. Oh no, it has to be the other way around now. Now there have been some recent positive signs that the media is starting to take this issue seriously. In December, uh, the authority announced a ban on harmful gender stereotyping and advertising, and that's a good example of the media using self-regulation to respond to public concern. Public concern is dredged up are the arseholes of feminists, and it demonstrates why as a society we need to continue to draw attention to and challenge sex and misogyny. Oh, what about misandry, Sturgeon? What about misandry? Each of us, men and women, individually, collectively, have a responsibility to meet the challenge of tackling in gender inequalities. No. I'll tell you what you can do with your challenging of tackling gender inequalities. You can stick it right up your hole. <laughs> I ain't getting involved in that. The onus isn't on me. <laughs> Half of the shit's in your head. So I look forward to working with all you in the months and years ahead. You may have my personal commitment to take forward these recommendations in positive spirit and to work together to make sure that they will do deliver the kind of change that we want to see. And 
ultimately that they help us to improve the lives of women and girls across Scotland because fuck boys, fuck men, they don't matter, it's all about women, it's all about empowering women because of the rampant sexism and misogyny in this country and all these evil white men and in the process and doing that, helping us to create a truly equal country. Nothing is equal when you single out men, you fuck. Anyway man, before I blow a gasket, I'm done.